Morlow is creating problems. What's good? It's your boy Rico. Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Duel. And we are at the end of day two of the team match event. And Team Leafeon, I don't know how we're doing actually. When I checked this morning, uh, Team Leafeon, or not Team Leafeon, Team Sylveon actually took the lead. And while this is loading up, if you notice, I got a haircut, guys. I took six inches off of my hair. All right, update. Day two. Where are we at? All right, let's go. Let's go, boys. Leafeon is still. Oh, wait. Oh, no! Sylveon's on top, and Sylveon is taking a charge. They are ahead by 200,000. 240,000. Okay, how are we going to win this? I'm not I'm not happy with that. We finally have a multiplier. Only at six, though, so we're actually going to attach it. We'll attach it to these two and uh, get some points for my team. Or get some points and try and get the... Uh, the cube we want to get the cube so we're gonna attach these two here hopefully we can get something above a hundred two hundred two hundred I want like 250 at least and an EX uh Manaphy preferably all right no EX Whimsicott I remember Whimsicott was cool and ooh, 300 300 I will take it <clears throat> all right let's take a look at this one can we get another 300 250 plus Oh, 126. Okay, so not quite 300, but uh, we're still on our way to getting our EX cube. I don't know how far we are, but we're not. I don't even think we broke a thousand yet. But what I want to do is I want to show you guys two games, two games that I've played against Rush decks, and Morlul is kind of taking care. Dude, he's kind of taking care of business. He's doing. He's putting in work. So I have two matches that I want to show you guys. So give me one sec. We'll be right back. All right, guys. We are back, and this game actually comes from my stream that we had yesterday. And um, take a look at my opponent. My opponent has three figures that are chained to ten. He's got the rush deck. He's got two speeds. The good thing here is he does not have the Topi Koku. So I'm not worried about the Coco rush. But even if he did have Coco, Morlo is part fairy. So he would be able to stop the rush. Although the Spore wouldn't really do anything, it would be able to stop the rush but essentially what happens here is Morlo is so good at when they take one entry point if you put Morlo on the other like the opposing side the opponent most likely is going to take the entry point but it doesn't matter if they take the entry point because I can spore I could sleep I can then come off the bench and luckily this guy does not have a Coco so let's watch how this match unfolds so I notice he doesn't have the Coco so I can come I can I can go straight um I can take their entry point right away, so he's going to be aggressive with his deal speed, so that means I have to... You know what? Actually, I think my opponent made a mistake here. I think I made a mistake, first of all. I don't think I should have opened up there. I think he should just outright attack my... Um, my Rotom. Uh, but like he decides to take the entry point first, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. And we're going to DC here just in case something bad happens. He pulls the switch, and I get the spore, and I'm like, all right, let's go. We can bring something off of the bench now. But my opponent does have some plates, and he's going to rock the scoop up. Oh, no, switch. He pulls the switch, and I'm going to attack again. I'm like, we need to free our entry points. He switches back, and let's go. We get the double spore, and now we're looking pretty good. Yeah, I think my opponent should have actually opened up and attacked my Rotom early on, but because um, the Zoro is asleep, I, I fear nothing. I fear nothing coming on the board, and he doesn't see that, and we surround him instantly. Good GG boys to that Rotom. And he pulls an interesting... I don't know why he Megas here. He Megas here, and he goes after my Morlo, which, I mean, if I were to sleep him, I probably would have moved over to the left, but then he could have woke him up with the Rotom, the falling turn, if he moved right there, but he doesn't wake him up, so... But, I mean, just, and the thing was, like, Morlo, while he's in this little corner, the opponent was actually taking a lot of time thinking what to do here. So he attacks here, and uh, he's hitting for 140, and I'm like, oh, no. What we need to do is we need to we need to make our Leafeon able to survive here. So I'm pretty sure I pull, uh, so I Miracle Seed first, just to give him the plus 20, and I'm like, all right, all you got to do is survive one more roll, because Gengar only has one more turn. I'm like, okay, good. The thing is, I am toxic, but if I lawnmower, I basically hit for 120, and this Gengar is chained to 10, so it hits for 110. So I'm going to lawnmower now, 
Um, I actually hit for 160, but because of the toxic, I am negative uh, 40s. But he attacks me, and he sees me hit for 160, goes down to 120, and he's like, oh, I don't think I'm going to do that again. But it allows me to move up with the Morlo. And here, I was going for the win. I was like, all I got to do is attack the Zoro. If we get the sleep, we're good. That's pretty much GG, boys. But I get the T-Wave. I get the T-Wave, and the opponent is able to surround me. But, I mean, you kind of just have to go for those plays. Like, that's... That was a win condition. You have to go for it. It didn't work out in my favor, but I still have the max revive, so that's why I was okay um, doing that play there. My opponent's going to move up, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. He's obviously going to try and block me with the, uh, the Zoro, but for some reason, I drop energy here to get rid of the negative uh, 40, but I should I should have been attacking um, the speed because if he already used his Zoro, then that's when I uh, realized I was like, oh yeah, he already used his Zoro. He already switched. I can freely attack now. The problem is I did get the Leaf Storm and now I have a huge miss. But I'm like, all right, let's get the revert. Let's get the revert and it's GG boys. Come on. And I don't get it. I don't get the revert, but we're still in a really, really good position. And I, what I found out is like, I mean, I've known this for a while. Rush decks, if you survive early on, there's not much they can do. Uh, but we get the sleep here. And what did I do? Did I hop over? No, he wakes him up. Oh, yeah, because I attacked there, actually. But because that of that, I was able to move up now. And he only has one bond in the PC, and I can freely attack this thing. I can get this thing off the board, and I can start uh, relieving the pressure on me. So he attacks again, although I don't have I don't I don't have the Do I have the roll? I don't have a I don't have the Hold on, let's see what I'm hitting for. I don't remember what I'm hitting for. Mm, unfortunate roll for me there. Prior to that, I was plus 60. Okay, so now I'm only hitting for 100. I was actually hitting for 105. So he was making the right plays by attacking my Leafion. But I still had the um, goal block. And I was definitely going to goal block with Morlo if things were bad. But because I'm going to threaten game here. And then my opponent, I move up. And then my opponent moves up his Zoro. And I was like, oh no. We have to survive this roll. But like Pokefighter says, don't fear the Zoro. So that's why I was playing aggressive. And boom, let's go. Don't fear the Zoro. And that's pretty much GG, boys. Don't have to attack here. He has to attack me. Oof. Get the T-Wave. I'm like, let's go. Remember I told you guys, this Marlo, this figure is a really good status conditioner. I, status conditioner. Er? I, guess, I don't know. I guess that's a word. Uh, but as, like I said, GG boys, my opponent decides to attack. And look at that. Leave you on hitting for 100. Max hitting for 160. That's absolutely insane. All right, now bear with me while we jump into game number dos. All right, guys, we are back game number two. This was actually, I think this was actually earlier today, and we are playing, uh-oh, my battery is low, another Rush deck, but this time he does have a Coco, and he's got the uh, the Gas Lady. So I go first. I'm going to be a little defensive here. My opponent brings up the, I don't know why he did that. So we're going to stop it there for a second. So he brings up the Tapu Coco on his first turn. Uh, and I don't really run rush decks that often, but I thought when rush deck users go second, they usually bring up their speed all the way to make me cover the goal. So I, I don't know, I was a little interested at that play. But anyway, I cut off the Coco. He brings up the speed, and then I have to cover goal the following turn. Or no, I don't. I bring up the Leafeon and my opponent right here. See, we're going to stop right there. Like, listen, nothing against the player. I know you have guessed it. Okay. I know you have the swap spot. We're in Legends. Like, I, I know the cheese that you're going to do. So I know what you're going to do. In my opinion, I think you should have just attacked, you should have taken the entry point and attacked the Rotom. Because I have the Lawnmower, that's that's a huge threat. And I'm just like, like I don't know. I think at this level, this high, I wouldn't say it's high level play, but at this level play, you can't do that. Like, you can do that in, like, what's under Legends. Uh, masters, you can probably do that under, under Masters and get away with it. And again, like I'm not trying to take anything away from this player, but like when you're at this level of play, I think you have to play better by making better decisions. That's just, that's my opinion. Uh, but I see what he's gonna do, so I cover up here. He brings the Ghastly on, and now I can start bringing up my threats. But then again, at the same time, he does have the double Zoros. But like Pokemon Butter says, don't fear the Zoro. So I'm decided to bring up my. Um, Decidueye, because Decidueye is useful because of its ability to pass through figures. 
And when my opponent did that, I was like, good, I'm going to threaten game. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lawnmower, and then I'm going to try and surround with the leaf count. See if my opponent catches what I'm going to do here. And he doesn't catch it, and I'm able to surround. Let's get this threat off of the board, not necessarily a threat, but now I can get all my figures on the board. But now I'm going to move here because if he wants to surround my uh, Leafeon, that's fine. Or my Decidueye, that's fine. Then I can win with Leafeon. But he pulls a great play there. He pulls a scoop up, and I was like, oh, that's good. Maybe maybe I should look at your plates and notice that you do have a scoop up. Like, I mean, I knew he had the swab early on, but, you know, I uh, didn't fall for the, or I did fall for the scoop up. So that was a good play there. But I'm going to max revive here. Because I want Decidueye. Decidueye is going to help me win here. And I off and I threatened the surround there. So he attacks the my Morlo, which is very, very interesting. Because, uh, well, I guess he had it covered. He had it covered. Because if I would have went over, he could have brought the Pokemon. So actually, no, I, I agree with the play here. I agree. With, I definitely agree with what he's doing here. Because he has coverage. If I put something to sleep, he can cover it. So I decided DC here. And I'm going straight after this... Uh, this Tapu Koko. If he switches, uh, I would prefer him to switch because then I can have something sleep over here and then Coco wouldn't. Well, I guess Coco could come back and reach him, but we get the double blue and I'm like, all right, well, there goes a double chance wasted and he moves up here. And what I decide to do here, what I decided to do here, he moves back. Okay, so what I decided to do here is I decided to move up and I wanted to bait him to surrounding me with his Coco. And again, so hold on, we're actually gonna talk. We're actually gonna stop, we're gonna talk. So at the beginning, I was kind of like saying, like, uh, in this high level of league, you should do this play instead. Well, I pretty much just ate my own words because that's two times I failed to look at my opponent's plates. The, the scoop up, he's got double scoop up, the scoop up and the hurdle jump. What I was doing there was I was trying to bait him into moving the Coco and surrounding here. But just like I said in my words, I should probably take my own advice because he's not that dumb. He's not going to do that, and then he knows that I would probably do that. So <laughs> I just ate my own words there, and he hurdle jumps me, and I'm like, okay, well, uh, since he the Zoro's already switched, we can freely start attacking now. So there goes Coco. Brings up the speed. I'm going to attack the speed the following turn. There goes speed. I was actually surprised that my Lorantis was not hitting this at all because he usually does a lot. But he, my opponent's in trouble now, so he scoops up, blocks me off, which is fine. Now I can actually advance with my Morlo. <clears throat> and here and I can attack, and it, this is the best play because he can't recover this uh, Zoro. He can't recover the Zoro. Nothing can touch the Zoro. And actually, I thought my opponent was going to swap spot here and then put the Ghastly here, but he decides to DC and go after my Leafeon, hoping for that Destiny Bond, and I get the Grass Whistle. Let's go. Don't know why he decided to respin there. I thought he was going to swap, put him right there. I mean, I would have attacked. By the way, we're actually going to stop and talk about that play. I thought he was going to swap spot, put the uh, Ghastly right here, and then I was going to attack with the... The Lorant is the following turn. I mean, granted, I have the favorable rolls, but I mean, I do have a large miss. I think it would have been a safer play to do that, and if I miss, that would wake him up. But it, he didn't do that, and now I can surround. And then I thought my opponent was going to go block with the Ghastly, but he decides not to, and that is GG. Boys, so I just wanted to show off Morlo. I think Morlo's actually Morlo's actually doing really well. I think Morlo causes some problems with Rush decks, because I remember when Rush decks how you would defend against him, how I how I used to defend against him is I would actually put like Terrakion there where Morlo was or um, Combuskin, just something. But I think Morlo with that large blue and able to status condition, able to sleep the opponent on the entry point, I think it's it throws a wrench in the in rush users plan. So but we're gonna cut it there. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. So until then, ladies and gentlemen, peace.